Hello, I'm Sarah Lumley and I've been at The Haven for nearly 14 years as a nutritional therapist. And whilst most of us are fairly well aware of how healthy eating can help us, there's information about environmental factors that some of us find a bit daunting. So what I want to do now is guide you through how you can really help to lessen the chemical load around you. We can't all avoid chemicals all the time, and in fact, many of them have really good uses, but there are some that we need to be aware of that may subtly affect our health. And so what I'm going to do now is guide you through some simple tips around your home and workplace for a healthier living and lifestyle. So as a nutritionist and a foodie, I spend a lot of time in the kitchen, and let's start there. When it comes to buying your food, that can be quite daunting. We're faced with headlines about organic food and then the perils and dangers of agrochemicals. But it does make sense to us at The Haven to buy organic when you can and when your budget and practicality allows. As an alternative to organics, then you can actually think about growing your own, even if it's just a few salad vegetables or crops on a pot on your patio. I've tried it and it was actually quite good fun and simpler than I thought it would be. But if you are buying non-organic produce, our advice here is to really wash it well and scrub it well to ensure you've removed as many of the residues as possible. So thick skinned fruit and vegetables like avocados and pomegranates and peas are already a safer option and you could consider buying those as non-organic rather than organic. So another area when we're looking at buying food is the whole issue around preservatives and additives. And obviously they're very useful when we're desiring shelf life, colour, flavours. And it seems to be most of the convenience foods and soft drinks confectionery are where you're going to find rather than these rather strange chemical derivatives. Traditionally we'd have been using things like salt or sugar or oils. And now when you start to look at labels you can see some quite complex names and numbers and that's my advice to you when you're buying your packet food look at the labels become a label detective and if you're seeing an ingredient you wouldn't normally associate with that food or there's a very long name or just a list of numbers then you might want to reconsider and put the product back and buy something else so when it comes to food preparation we also need to be aware and there are some pans and containers that can actually leach chemicals into food that we've cooked in them and we inadvertently absorb them. And I'm talking here mainly about things like non-stick coatings in saucepans and then the plastics that you'll find in food packaging and bags and films and so forth. But there are plenty of good solutions. First of all, I'd recommend stainless steel saucepans to use or cast iron. And in fact, nowadays we are seeing more ceramic cookery ware and although it can seem quite expensive, it may be well worth investing in this type of cookery ware for a pot that maybe you're using every day. It seems to have all the benefits of non-stick without the chemical associations that you get, say, with Teflon and so forth. And for casseroles and slow cooking, I would probably recommend using oven-proof china or cast iron. So when it comes to cooking, try to avoid using too many canned, tinned or carton foods because, again, these are limed in plastic and opt for bottles or jars instead. When you're heating up food, think about the plastic food containers as well, and maybe transfer the food into a saucepan and heat it on the hob instead. When it comes to storing food, I'm a fan now of using glass instead. So for food storage, I use glass bowls, and you can buy glass containers that actually have airtight lids, or stainless steel canisters, even recycled old jam jars. And these are all going to be better alternatives than plastic containers. When I'm wrapping food, I'll use the unwaxed parchment paper, again, rather than a cling wrap. Unless I need to have an airtight seal, then I'll use the parchment with maybe some cling wrap over the top. And then other implements in the kitchen, well, I'm a big fan of wooden chopping boards and glass jugs and wooden spoons over the plastic alternatives. So when it comes to fluids, use glass as well. Drink out of a cup, a mug, a glass, rather than plastic or polystyrene. On a positive note, there's been quite a lot of EU legislation and guidance on the use of chemicals, particularly in food packaging and containers. And I think there's going to be more to come in the next couple of years. 
Now we're looking at cleaning in your home and the kitchen. And whilst it's important, there may be quite a few products that you're using that will have quite a few chemicals in them. And our advice would be here, again, looking at the label. And if you're seeing a lot of chemical ingredients, maybe think about simplifying the products that you're use, using. Eco products, as well as being good for the environment, also tend to have much lower chemical contents. And I find them equally as effective. And supermarkets are also getting the grasp that consumers want simpler products to use around their home. And they're providing really good lines of economical but effective low chemical cleaners. The uh, microfiber cloths are really helpful too. And all you actually need for those is water. And they're very good for just everyday light dirt and dust. You put them in the washing machine and they'll last for years. And if you're actually really enthusiastic, you can consider making your own products. There's quite a few websites out there, and I found a recipe that was really simple with bicarbonate of soda and vinegar and lemon juice, and it was a really quite a good, efficient, everyday cleaner. So elsewhere in the house, just be a little bit vigilant, particularly when it comes to things like garden products and DIY. Look at the labels, read the safety guidelines, where relevant, work in a good ventilated room, and really try to minimise your exposure as much as possible. There are concerns also about the chemicals in skincare products. And I would say prioritise to those that you tend to put on your skin and leave on your skin. Things like makeup, moisturisers, sunscreens. Again, you're going to be a label detective here and just check and see anything that looks unpronounceable, those long list of numbers, I would really try to seek out a more natural alternative. And the good news is, again, there's more legislation restricting the use of these chemical additives. And now a lot more companies are launching their own natural or organic skincare ranges. So water is very good for your skin. And in fact, hydration is full stop. And as a nutritional therapist here at The Haven, I'm always recommending people drink plenty of water in addition to other fluids. However, we do know there are metals and other chemicals in our water supply. So a really swift and simple solution would be to buy a water filter jug. And you can buy those from your local supermarket. If you're staying in your house for a long period of time, you could invest in a water filter system. These vary enormously and could be plumbed under the kitchen sink to help your water supply in the kitchen only, or they can be quite extensive and be run throughout the whole house. When you're carrying water with you, use a glass bottle rather than plastic. You can actually buy special water carriers or simply recycle one that you may have used already. Incidentally, malic acid, which is a fruit acid found in apples, is very helpful for removing aluminium, which you may have absorbed from our tap water from our bodies. So I'm talking here mainly about electrical devices and in the last 50 years or so the amount of electrical equipment and devices that we're using at home and in our workplace has dramatically increased. Almost every household has at least one television, a computer or a laptop, mobiles, a tablet and we're also using cordless phones more and then of course we need Wi-Fi or broadband to help power up a lot of this. We really don't fully understand the impact that is electric smog is having on us. And so it makes sense really to minimise your exposure when you can. Research seems to indicate that even very low levels of radiation from something like a mobile phone may subtly affect our health. But really, you know, time will tell and we need more research and data to substantiate this. And so limit the use of your mobile or laptop and take a break from your computer or phone when you're at work. Avoid keeping portable devices close to your body. And if you're making a lot of telephone calls, consider using a corded landline rather than mobile. And if you're using a cordless phone, look at the ones that actually have a lower radiation level. And there's quite a few on the market now. So try not to sleep with a mobile phone or a laptop or a cordless phone near you and definitely don't use your tablet or mobile as an alarm clock. In fact, using as little electrical equipment in your bedroom as possible will really help your quality of sleep. And if you enjoy watching the television at night, then we'd recommend you switch it off and disconnect it before you go to sleep. 
Interestingly, plants are really good at mopping up radiation and airborne chemicals, including things like carbon monoxide and dry cleaning residues. And there's research that's actually highlighted spider plants, peace lilies, ficus and ferns. So think about buying a few and having them around your home or office where you know you're going to be using quite a lot of electrical equipment. Companies are also selling shields specifically for mobile phones and computers. So you may want to think about buying one of those. So although it seems you've got quite a lot to contend with when it comes to your environment and the chemical exposure, there's a lot of solutions here that I've presented to you. And we're not suggesting that you take them all on board, but rather dip into those that you feel are appropriate and are doable. And for now, we're wishing you a good, happy, healthful environment.